check. And we, we have the availability of having this room one week from tonight as well. I know a lot of you want to be heard tonight. It's going to be very, very difficult to hear from everybody. I, I would, at this point, be very willing to uh, hold a second meeting a week from this evening at 7.30 right here in this room and go over the exact same slide presentation and, and then take questions at that point. Um, I know you're all out here already, and I appreciate that. I really, truly do appreciate that. Uh, but if that's something that uh, we can, we, if, if some of you would rather come back in, a, in one week and, and have a shorter time uh, waiting to speak, that would be uh, certainly a viable option. So um, at this point, we will schedule that. Uh, we'll schedule the second meeting for one week from this evening. And anybody who is, uh, who is willing to just come out to that meeting, and if you'd like to leave right now and come to that meeting, you're more than welcome to. But other than that, we'll start with this one this evening. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming again. Um, while I have a captive audience here, uh, I feel it's, it's uh, very important uh, to go over a few things about the coronavirus. I know you, you've heard, heard so much about it, I'm sure. Um, I just wanted to give you an update. We, we've sent a community update out uh, that we have uh, we've taken precautions in the in the rec center and in town hall. You'll see uh, throughout the facility. You'll see hand sanitizers. Um, the town uh, has a designated cleaning team in the town hall and the and the community center to sanitize and disinfect counters, chairs, doors, restrooms, etc. Uh, several times a day. The deep cleaning takes place every evening. Um, signs are in place reminding everybody to uh, to follow the, CD, the uh, CDC guidelines. Uh, if you haven't visited the CDC site, it's very, very informative. I encourage you to go there and visit. Um, staff and volunteers are reminded to consistently to wash their hands and stay home if they're sick. And I would encourage all of you as well to uh, to do, to do the same. Uh, I, I attended a meeting at, uh, in Monroe County. The, uh, the medical director of Monroe County had this past weekend. Um, obviously, he said we have moved from a preventative phase to a containment phase. Um, and so the community at large is moving in that direction. So I. Uh, he, he just pretty much encouraged everybody to go to the CDC website and follow their guidelines. So I would, I would encourage that as well. Okay, let's start. Uh, we'll start this evening uh, with our assessment update. So this evening I plan to, the goals for this are to explain A, how assessments work, uh, show why the reassessments have been done and uh, understand the difference between taxes and assessments and uh, inform for the next steps in the process. Uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll welcome any questions or comments that you may have. I only ask, and I know this is going to be very, very difficult, but I only ask that you not, we don't necessarily drill down into your specific case because we would literally be here all week. Um, we, we, we have to, I, I understand all of you have specific issues you want to deal with, and that's what our pro, the ongoing process will be for. We'll, we'll, as you, uh, we'll set up meetings for informal reviews and formal reviews, and at that point you'll, you'll be able to discuss uh, with our assessment office your concerns and what have you. Uh, I just ask that, I, I certainly don't mind general questions but uh, I, I would ask that we don't get into, into the finer details simply because of the size of the crowd. I'm sorry to ask this, but who are you? Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, I'm the, I'm the parent of the town supervisor, Kieran Hamm. Okay, thank you. That was my next thing. Presenters, I, I, I will be presenting this evening as well as our town assessor, Wayne Pickering. Uh, at the end of this table here, uh, we have uh, we have uh, a panel that will answer questions uh, at the end of the end of the presentation. At the very end is Nicole Curcio. She is an appraiser and also works in our assessment office. Uh, next is is Wayne 
he is our town assessor. And then Brian Dick is our finance director. He will answer questions regarding any budgetary questions that you may have. And while I'm at it, I may as well introduce everybody else in the room. I, I apologize, I was remiss in that. To my right is our town clerk, Jennifer West. Then we have Deputy Supervisor Peg Havens. And town board members, Shauna Sartori, Dave Velasquez, and Meredith Stockman Broadbent. To my left, our staff table is Jeff Myers. He's commissioner of Parks and Rec. We have uh, Jason Kennedy, who is our commissioner of DPW, and Joe LaFay, our town attorney. And in the middle of the room is uh, Mitch Pritchard, and he is he's our uh, communications director. So He already warned us that everything's being recorded. Everything <laughs> is being recorded, yes. I don't know why, but he had to bring that up. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. First, why is parents in reassessing? What is triggering this reassessment? Well, New York State and the town of Parenton and many towns uh, review their assessments of all their properties to obtain a, an equalization rate. Well, what's that? Uh, the equalization rate is a rate that, that allows different municipalities and who have let their assessments lapse uh, be able to actually um, charge the, the tax, uh, there's, let me start off. The check is done every year with the idea to keep the equalization rates at 100%, which accurately reflect the town's overall property value. So if you have a town that uh, lets their assess, assessments lapse, and the New York State will do a review of it and says, hey, your assessments are only at 80%, of what they should be, of what the market value is, anytime going forward that those uh, assessment rates are, are increased to the 100% value. So that's what the equalization rates, it, it makes sure that all towns across the, the county or across the state are, uh, are, are, the rates are somewhat even. So New York State strongly encourages the town to be at 100% equalization, meaning if some property values rise, some, some property assessments rise. Currently in Monroe County, most towns are at 100%. Now several have fallen in the last year or so, and uh, many of those have assessments scheduled as well. Uh, the City of Rochester, the Town of Pittsburgh, Town of Henrietta, they all have, have uh, reassessments scheduled this year. And uh, the Town of Penfield, which has fallen, did have one scheduled for this year. Uh, and they pulled it back and are going to do it next year. Uh, for the, the only reason they did that is because their assessor is retired, so they didn't want to go through that process. For 2020, Parenton's equalization rate did fall below 100%. Um, in other words, overall, overall, the homes overall in the town of Parenton were selling for more than they were assessed at. So when, they, when the homes go out on the market, the sell prices in general, overall, the town were higher than, than the sell price, or the, than the assessed price. So increasing home values have increased the entire town value. Um, and the idea for the assessment is to have the, the property market value equal to property assessment. I'll, I'll speak later to that on, on why, the, or speak about the increase in uh, and the sales values of the towns. So why is 100% equalization important? When the town's equalization rate, uh, as determined by New York State, falls below 100%, property owners in the town of Parenton may pay a larger share of the school district and county budgets. Therefore, it is necessary really to update property assessments to keep the rates equitable. Um, when I say keep the rates equitable, one of the advantages to doing a hundred uh, to uh, doing a reassessment to get us back up to 100% equalization is it really is equitable for all all property homeowners. If your assessment equals the value of your home, then ac across the town, which is what the, the goal is for every reassessment, then then if you own a piece of property that you can sell for $100,000 and, and somebody across town owns a piece of property that they can sell for $100,000. If 
if they're both assessed at hundred thousand dollars then they're going to the, the taxes and everything else are all paid equal throughout the year so there's there that's the reason why we we have somebody if the assessments fall below 100% and they become unequal and, and this person can sell their property for 100,000, this can sell their property for 100,000 but it's assessed at far less, they're going to be paying less in taxes. So it really is the key, one of the main keys is to have equity throughout the town and make sure that your property is assessed at its, at its true value. Uh, another reason is uh, to keep it at 100% is the, the full share of state aid for schools in town. Now, not all state aid is tied to, uh, to assessments, 100% uh, equalization, but there is some state aid that, that has, gives preferential treatment to, the, to uh, towns and municipalities that maintain 100% assessment. Another advantage is bond ratings. We just uh, recently um, went, underwent some uh, refinancing of some of our bonds, and uh, the rating agencies all ask about assessments because it's a sign of uh, that the, the, the municipality pays attention and is healthy and, and continues to uh, monitor what goes on in the town. And if they reassess frequently, or not frequently, but whenever it falls below 100%, then uh, it's better for the bond rating. As a matter of fact, uh, thanks to a lot of Brian's hard work, our, uh, we did a fabulous job in our refinancing of our, bond, our bonds this year. So, The next item is shifts in school and county tax apportionments. The county and school districts, as many of you know, cross lines. You have, uh, our, our town has, I think, five different school districts in it. Um, so there are, there are various, if, if the, assessment uh, equalization rates for all those different towns are not at 100%, it complicates things when it comes to tax time. Um, and that brings us to our next thing, is, is, is uh, reduced confusion. Uh, now I'm sure many of you have seen uh, the tax uh, bills. As you can see, this is a tax bill for Webster. Webster is currently at 77%. Um, if you look down here, in this area here, I don't know if you can see my red thing, but in this area here, the total assessed value for this home is $117,500. But that's at 77%. Um, so the, the true value, the full market value of the home is up here at 152597 Now after a whole series of, of, of uh, calculations, we do end up with a town budget of $612. This is their, their town tax payments, $612. When we look at our Parenton one, you see the total assessed value here at 154.5. The full market is 154.5 because we are at 100%. And our town, our town taxes here for that same property are $346. Our tax rate here is 225. I'm going to go back to Webster's. One of the reasons why their tax rate is five dollars and twenty cents. Uh, normally, they would have a higher tax rate, but since they are at 77 percent, that tax rate is artificially higher. If they were to do a reassessment and move to 100 percent, which, by the way, from what I understand, Webster has finally uh, uh, put into their budget money to start a reassessment in 2021. But um, if they were to do a reassessment and get back up to 100%, this tax rate, in my estimation, would go down probably close to four to $4. Um, it would go down to $4. So it would go down uh, at least a dollar and 20 cents per thousand assessed value. So it's, it's uh, as, you, as you raise your assessment, overall assessment in town, the tax rate comes down. And I'll speak to that a little, little bit later. Assessments versus taxes. Reassessments themselves do not increase the amount of taxes that, that need to be collected by local governments. Um, the assessment only ensures that the taxes that you pay are distributed equitably based on your current market value. 
We do reassessments to make sure that all properties are assessed at their market value so that two very similar properties, like I said earlier, that may sell for similar prices are assessed similarly. That's the only fair way to do it. Um, property owners sometimes confuse property taxes and assessments. If assessments go up 10%, it does not necessarily mean that your property taxes are going to go up 10%. And I'll see this, and well, I'll show this in the next slide. Um, the total amount of taxes collected by the town, which is the tax levy, is computed totally independent of assessments. You got, you, that's a very, very important point. The entire budget process that we go through beginning in the summer, we never even look at the assessed value until the very end, the overall assessed value at the very end in order to get the tax rate. It does not have anything to do with how much we are going to, the total amount that we are going to tax. Um, and I will, once again, I will show a little more of that later. <coughs> so here we have, I hope a lot of you can see this, because. Here we have a, a budget summary for our actual budget summary for, for the year 2020. In the year 2020, our town assessed valuation, the entire town assessed valuation. Now we're, I'm leaving the village out of this because they are their own taxing entity. So this is anything outside of the village. The total assessed valuation for the town of Parenton outside the village was, was this number here. $3.8 billion. Our total appropriation, which is in essence in budgeting terms, this is what it costs to run the town. $20 million. That's what we spend on everything from salaries to everything that it takes the, for the year to run the town is $20 million. Our revenues and unexpended balances were $11,719. What is that? That's anything that we get from payments for rec programs. Uh, we get reimbursements from the county and the state for plowing their roads. So this is these are the expenses. Twenty million. These are the revenues. Eleven million. The delta is eight point five million dollars. That's what we have to raise in taxes in order to have the balance, the budget balance. Now all of that, and for all of this stuff, the total appropriations, the revenues, all of that is done totally outside of, of the uh, assessed valuation. We don't have to have that number at all involved to get to this number, this $8.5 million. Once we get to this $8.5 million, then we divide that by this total number to get the tax rate, which is 2.25. Our tax rate is two dollars and twenty-five cents per thousand assessed value. So that's that's the only way that's the only time that this number comes into place in order to get this tax rate. So therefore, I, I wanted to point out that this number here, this eight point five million, New York State has a tax cap. So every year we're not allowed to go above. Uh, to raise uh, that, this number here cannot go more than up more than two percent. Regardless of what this number here is, regardless if we reassess, if we reassess and this number goes up by a billion dollars, we can't go up by more than two percent on that on that number right there. This this tax levy cannot go up by more than two percent. So if we were to last year, if we were to do this assessment that we're doing right now. Last year, here is the number here. Here's the new tax assessed valuation. So after the reassessment, all the property in the town of Parenton is now worth 4.2. It went up from 3.8 to 4.2. Now we go through the budget process. The appropriations are all the same. The, the revenues, all the same. And the amount to be raised by taxes, all the same. What does that mean? It means now we divide this by this much larger number, and our tax rate is now $2.03 per thousand assessed value. So it goes from $2.25 to $2.03. That's what I was talking about in Webster. If Webster were to reassess and go from 77% 
up to 100%. That's why their tax rate would probably go from $5.70 down to $4 or somewhere around there because that's that's how that's just how it works. The tax, that's the tax rate is tied to the to the assessed valuation, but as the assessed valuation goes up, the tax rate has a tendency to go down. So in my next slide I'm going to show you now here's a house, I mean, this is just an example of it. Here's a house in the town of Parenton. Last year, we had the 3.8 million. This is the amount we had to raise, by, raise in taxes, the actual tax levy. If we had a $220,000 home, and our tax rate was $2.25 per thousand, they would have paid $494 for their taxes, for their town taxes that year. Now, if we had done that reassessment and had gone up to 4.2 billion, like I just told you, went from 3.8 to 4.2, the tax levy stayed the same. And let's just say that this particular house, its assessed value went from 220 to 245. So they had a $25,000 increase in their assessment. So, and when they were reassessed, they went from 220 to 245, a $25,000 reassessment. But the new tax rate is 203, their payment for taxes for the town would be $498, about $3.25 more for the entire year than it would have been if we had not done a reassessment. So a $25,000 increase in their assessment equaled about a $3 increase in their overall taxes for the year. So, consequently, now there are more than, obviously there are more than the town uh, taxing entities in the town. We have, we have the school district, we have the county, we have the town, and in some portions we have the village. These were the, the, uh, the, tax, the local tax rates for 2020. The school district was $22, the county was $879, and the town was $225. Now, now we can only control the town tax rates. But as I said before, all of these entities also are under the restrictions of the 2% tax cap. So these tax rates likely, and I can't speak for them because that's, I, I can't do that, they could override the tax, the, the, the uh, tax cap if they would like. But, and, and actually in the school district, you, you vote for that budget. But uh, all of these, I would expect that all of these tax rates would go down. When the reassessment comes through and the total assessed value goes up, as I said, the tax rates come down. So I would expect all of these tax rates to go down uh, next year. Why? Have they ever Pardon? gone down? Why? I mean, towns like Webster aren't participating this year. Aren't participating in the reassessment. But they are not. So they will still be artificially low. And will well, the, 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 they are 77 percent, but what they do is they, they it, it's an equalization rate. So as I as I showed you on that Webster tax bill, their their 117,000 is the assessed value, but all of the calculations are done on the full market value. It pulls it up by by 23 percent. It pulls it up by 23 percent. So the problem with that is it's not equitable. So you could have somebody who is, our, their total assessed value is 117.5, and they're pulled up to 152, but somebody else has an assessed value of 150, and their, their, their property values, are, or their sell price could be totally different. They're, when you, the longer you wait between assessments, the, the discrepancies between the, the uh, properties gets greater and greater. So I, go ahead, I'll, I'll answer a few questions, but I do want to get through this and then we'll have all the questions that you so want. on your previous slide, the tax rate for the last five years here in the town has not changed. It has stayed right around 7.65 on average, it fluctuates 0.01 or 2 to a point. So the tax rate has been constant when you look at your bill for the last five years Correct. here in the town. So when you pay, is directly related to the fluctuation in the assessment. Because the tax rate hasn't come down as the assessment has increased. But the, uh, we haven't, we've done a reassessment in 2018. 
Yeah. But before to... that, I believe the last reassessment win was was in 2002. Yeah, showed in the other one those those rates will change as those reassessments come through uh, I, I full well expect that to happen I will I, I would uh, be remiss if I did not say once the once this whole process is done we do have tax breaks available for certain people we have the star tax the star tax exemption is available the senior citizens with limited income, they have exemptions. We have disability with limited income. We have veterans exemptions. We have agricultural assessment exemptions. Please see our, our, uh, our assessment office for anything that you may be eligible for. Uh, if you're going to challenge your assessment, by all means, ask them at that time. They should be able to help you. Yes, quick, quick question. So you just mentioned STAR. So the STAR assessment is, ba I'm sorry, the STAR deduction is based on the assessed value of the house so if that's the case that, that, not, does would that mean that you're 30,000 off for normal stock to start so I want to say it's going to be available next year so my he doesn't know okay <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we have a stenographer here so if you're speaking it you really we have to we have to take turns otherwise there's no way that she can possibly get the information down so yeah We'll, we'll do that when we have the questions. Because I will ask you to come up to the front when we have a question. Can I, I'm just okay. almost done with the This business. slide deck can be available online? All this will be available online. Thank yes. you. Yes. So, we did get it. so uh, once again, I, I want to stress, um, where am I? I would like to stress that uh, assess value our, our overall goal is to have your assessed value truly equal to your market value of your home. Over time, market values of properties change, obviously. The value of some properties may increase while the value of some properties may decrease. Now that really hasn't happened very much in Parenton, and I'll get into that in a moment. Reassessments really ensure that your property is assessed based on current market values rather than our market values from years ago. What, what is the source of that market value data? Yeah. Uh, of the market that uh, there, uh, there are actual house sales and, and home sales. So your, historical sales and the, through 2019, our, our assessment goes last two years back. Mm -hmm. so uh, they generally go uh, the, the, the end of the, 2018. It would be the end of 2017, 2018, 2019. Is that right, Wayne? New sales from the middle of uh, 2017. For this assessment. 
These are from 2017 through the middle of the 19th. Correct. Okay. And so. Can we just finish up? I, I really would like well, to. You I, haven't expressed where the source of that. That is very, very important. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, this also ensures that two property owners who own properties with similar market values are assessed similarly. This is, this is really, I can't stress the, the importance of this. The equity is really, really important in this, uh, um, in this situation. When we do a reassessment, it really is to bring the values up to where they should be so that everybody is paying the, the, the right amount. So what would impact the market? Strong economy, low unemployment rate, low mortgage interest rates, and, and uh, fewer homes on the market. So that brings me, I, I, w I, was, uh, I was intending to have a, a real estate agent come here and speak this part. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he was unable to make it, but he did give me this information. Um, <laughs> The, inf the general information, upstate New York enclave sees insane real estate boom. This is from the New York Post. Uh, the housing market in this area has really heated up significantly in Monroe County and in general, but in particular in the eastern part of Monroe County. Um, right now, and these are these are numbers that I've got from, from uh, this real estate agent that's that sent me this information. Parenton, last year, 468 homes were sold in the town of Parenton. Right now, on the market, are four, there's a total of 45 homes. 45, that's it. The inventory, the inventory value, or the inventory of homes on the market is extremely low, not only in Parenton, but, but all over um, Monroe County, and in particular in eastern Monroe County. The town of Penfield, 200 home, 210 homes sold last year. They have nine homes on the market right now. These are the numbers that, yes, sir. So I'm thinking back, this is through 2017 to mid-19, but you're now speaking of the challenges uh, with uh, 2020. Okay. One second, let me finish. Okay. Gone. What you're doing is describing what should be future dated two years from now. Right. The yeah, values happening. But if you let me finish this, I'll, I will, I will. But I want you to know where.